Back in the day when I was starting my business, after some trial and error, I realized that there were some things that were keeping me stuck and from growing at the pace that I wanted and needed to grow. Once I corrected these mistakes, I saw a huge shift, not only in my mindset, but in my business and more importantly, in my profits. In today's video, we're going to discuss three mistakes that could be keeping you stuck. We're going to discuss how to avoid them or how to get through them quickly so you can start your profitable bookkeeping business once and for all. Hello and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Veronica Sagastumi, and this is the Profitable Bookkeeping Biz channel, where I help you to start, run, and scale a profitable bookkeeping business with ease. Looking back, I mean, hindsight is always 2020, right? I realized there were three mistakes that I was making. And once I correct them, I became a lot easier to refer. I saw profits in my business because of efficiency and getting on those discovery calls with prospects to convert them to clients became a lot easier because I got clearer. Like I mentioned, there were three main mistakes that I was making early on, but I identified them and I corrected them. And I bet you're either going through one of these mistakes now, you're making one of these mistakes now, or you're trying to get out of it. You're trying to correct it and get through it and get to the next level. So let's talk about the very first one. When you're first starting out, you're almost desperate to get that first, second, and third client. So you will say yes to just about anybody. That mistake can keep you stuck with the wrong clients from the very beginning. And that comes from a mindset of scarcity. That comes from a mindset of like, you're lucky if you get one client, let alone two or three or if you're like an independent consultant bookkeeper or freelancer, you may be thinking, I don't know when my next client's going to come. Trust the process. Slow it down a bit. Take the time to identify who it is that you want to work with. Who do you want to support? Who do you want to serve? Having the wrong clients can be not only detrimental to your business, but your morale. There are wonderful clients out there, but there can be also clients that are very demanding, unrealistic, don't see or understand what it takes to do our business the right way and don't value it. So they're always trying to lowball your, your fee or trying to you know get you to do more things because they think that you should for the price that you're charging. So I want you to really take your time, even though in those early stages, I know, I know how tempting it is to just say yes to anybody. And you may have to, that's okay, but set some boundaries, which we'll talk about. That's mistake number two, mistake number three coming up. So stay tuned. Hold on. Um, I just want to make sure that you guys understand that in the beginning, you will have to take on a couple of clients that maybe are not your ideal client. I get it. But also, so I want you to be looking out for the red flags. Are they not respecting your boundaries? The expectations unrealistic. Is it so demanding? I want you to not only think about the fact that you need that client, but that client needs you and that you do have a say because after all, you are building your business, not their business. You're supporting them and you are giving a service that is very valuable. And if they don't see it and treat you the same way that you feel you're treating them, it's not going to work. So the very first mistake that I was making is saying yes to anybody that looked my way. As they used to say, this one sales guy that I worked with would always say, you don't have to pick every low hanging fruit. In the early days, you may have to pick a few of those low hanging fruits so that you can get the practice, get the confidence. And then you may have to revisit the profile of that ideal client. And that's why a lot of times people will say you, you should niche down. Well, niche down is that word is more of like, for me, it's you can specialize, specialize in the type of client that you want, specialize by either industry. For example, you may want to serve a hairstylist or website designers only or photographers. I have a colleague, all she does is bookkeeping for lawyers because she's able to really get a great reputation for being the go-to bookkeeper for attorneys. They keep referring each other to her. So you may want to niche down, which is specialized by an industry or the size of the company. Okay. Maybe you want to work like in my field, we only serve funded startups. Now startups is not what you think of, Oh, they're just starting out of business. Funded startups for us is uh, companies, corporations who have investor funding for venture capital funding, angel investor capital funding. And so that's a little bit of a different startup than just a business who just started. The next 
I just want to caution you to take your time. It's, it's, it's bound to happen, but just know how to get through it. And how you get through it is you start to watch for the red flags and you start to realize I don't need to work with everybody. I need to be a little bit pickier so that you can protect yourself, protect the business that you're building. Okay. On to mistake number two, saying yes to working with all types of accounting software systems. Let me explain what I mean by that. Maybe you have a client that works on Zero. Maybe you have a client that works on FreshBooks, another one who works on QuickBooks Online, another one that works on QuickBooks Desktop, different. It's very different. And another one that maybe works with uh, a higher level uh, accounting system like NetSuite. That's a lot of systems and you cannot become an expert in all of them. The thing is, when you choose one or even two systems to really know inside and out, what happens is um, you increase your efficiency, you become faster, you know the ins and outs, you know the tips and tricks, best practices to use that software and you get the most out of it. You're always up to date. It increases your proficiency, which turns into profits because you're not having to spend all this time trying to figure out how to do something you make a mistake and you have to correct it. And that's what mistake number two is. When you work with too many bookkeeping accounting software systems, you are constantly in this learning and testing and fixing correcting phase, which turns into using up a lot more of your time, which decreases your profitability. So mistake number two is not selecting or not choosing a software to specialize in. When you become a specialist, you niche down by software system, you become the go-to expert and you become so much more proficient, faster. That turns into profits. Stage number three, not having boundaries, not establishing boundaries from the very get-go will leave so much room for your clients to do what we call in this industry as scope creep. Scope creep is when a client continues to add onto your workload. You started out with a service, a list of services that you were going to provide for a certain amount of hours or a certain amount of fees. We will talk about uh, hourly versus value-based fee pricing in the future. But for now, let's just pretend that you have quoted them a price. Here's the scope of services that you're going to deliver on. And little by little, the client sees that you're very capable as it's a great compliment, but they start to add. Okay, and they start to text you and Slack you and email you and call you and expect you to turn around within an hour or a few minutes. And it becomes a very strained relationship because you did not set some really specific boundaries, but not just set them, but follow, implement, strictly follow them. And so one of the ways that you can do this is by having a service agreement. And in that service agreement, you will have an area or like a schedule or an exhibit that will list out your scope of services or scope of work. And here you're saying, hey, these are the services that we're agreeing to deliver for you. You can specify the timing, the deliverable, you can specify the method your preferred method of communication. You can specify your set office hours, what is a, a realistic deliverable, what you expect them to provide you with, you know, like access, logins, um, uh, just, you know, timely information so that you can uh, not only process the daily transactions, but close the books, reconcile the accounts, generate financial statements, all the good things. But if you don't set these boundaries from the very beginning, when you have a discovery call, here's how I work with my client. Here is how you, what you can expect. Here's how we communicate. You set that tone from the very beginning. That's how you can avoid having the mistake number three. You see the very first couple of um, clients that I had, it was on via email. It went really fast and furious. It happened so quickly that I didn't even have time to go get a service agreement. Um, it came later. And so defining that scope of service was really difficult after the fact. So learn from my mistake, please. It'll save you so much heartache and having to have much more difficult conversations later on. Um, I have a, I will put it below, but I have a service agreement in my Etsy shop, the bookkeeping shop. And it's a service agreement that already includes a lot of that language that I'm referring to because some of those consulting agreements don't come with it. And it has a preset um, list of services that bookkeepers and accountants deliver to their clients. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave the link below. But other than that, I just want you to know that it is absolutely okay for you to set boundaries. I know that in the beginning, you want to please the client and you want to get a grave raving review, 
But if they don't respect your boundaries, your business and personal boundaries, they are not the client for you. So we've covered a lot in this video. If you've been enjoying this video, be sure to hit that subscribe that button and that bell so you'll be notified the next time that I publish a video. Now, going back to today's three mistakes, identify your client. Who do you want to work with? Who do you want to support? Who do you want to be part of their team? Because you will become part of their advisory team. Number two, working with too many systems. Not, what is that? Uh, jack of all trades, right? You don't want to be that person. You want to be an expert. So choose the software that you're going to be supporting, that you're going to be owning and being an expert in. Number three, establish your boundaries with your clients. If they don't follow them, if they push back, they are not your client. Your clients are waiting to work with you. Now, this is not a mistake. It, it could be. It's a little bonus. You probably know how to do so much more than you want to offer. For example, I know how to do stock option administration. I have been in the Silicon Valley for many decades and I know how to do it. I don't enjoy doing it. I know how to do it. I can do it, but I don't want to do it. So I don't even offer that service. When the client asks me for it, I get really good at saying the following phrase. You know, I know how to do that, but it's frankly, it's outside of my area of expertise. There are so many other people out there that can, can do a much better job for you. I'd be happy to refer you to one of them. You see, that way I can like not do something that I don't want to do. That's how we build. A, <laughs> when we start saying yes to things that we shouldn't be saying yes to, that's how we build a business that we don't enjoy after a while. So get practice it a few times and make sure that you're able to type it, say it on a meeting or on a call. And it's okay for you to say no. It doesn't mean that they're not going to want your other services that you love to offer. It just means that it, when they see somebody that's capable, they're going to ask, hey, do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do that? And it's often that we feel that temptation to say yes out of not only obligation, but the people pleasing, the client pleasing, the wanting to do a great job for our clients. Do a great job for you in your business and protect what you say yes to. All right, be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back next week because I'm going to have another great video for you. Oh, and by the way, that service agreement that I have in my Etsy shop, it also comes with an email script that you can use when you deliver your service agreement for signature. All right, enough about that. I am so happy you stayed with me this long. I hope you got a lot of value. Go ahead and leave your comments or questions in the comments below, and I will be sure to get back to you as quickly as I can. Until next time, I'm Veronica. Bye for now.